Good evening and welcome to Clawson World. In today's video, it's going to be a mixed bag. I have a few things that I have to harvest that I have not harvested before, but I have one of them I haven't even grown before. So it'll be something new that you all get to see. And I saw something in the garden today that I want to share with you. I want to share this because there's a lot of new gardeners out there. There's a few new gardeners who've never gardened before on my channel who are new subscribers and I want to specifically talk to everybody but especially those people so join me in the garden can everybody see what I see this pot is attached to the drip irrigation and I came outside today and I saw this and I thought, what in the world is happening? And it made me think about gardening. Gardening for new gardeners, gardening for seasoned gardeners. And what I'm trying to show you is all that water. Gardening can be overwhelming to a seasoned gardener to a new gardener but the takeaway I want you to have here is is that grow what you like to eat attempt to grow what you and your family like to eat but remember things happen the weather can change at an instant your irrigation can somehow go awry the animals in your environment be that insect or squirrels or rabbits or deer or whatever those are for you that are that you consider pests can eat all the hard work that you put into your crop and so I want to take this time to say take a breath try to relax and try to not be so overwhelmed realize that these types of things happen it happens to all of us it is okay sure it's frustrating because now I have to harvest this bucket but you know what I had to harvest this bucket anyway it just so happens I've got to do it right now so in the future when you feel frustrated and overwhelmed by your garden because you're brand new and you feel like you don't know what you're doing reach out to a fellow gardener there's so many of us in the gardening community be that on youtube or even in your local area see if you can get some assistance see if you can get somebody to just chat about your beets with or your onions or whatever you're growing but remember you are not alone you are never alone so again grow what you like to eat attempt to grow what you like to eat and realize that that this type of thing happens to us all. I don't love beets, not even a little bit. <laughs> but I know that beets are good for you. If you have an iron problem, beets are good for you. Beets are nutritious. And I decided to try to grow some beets because I know they are good for you. But I don't like them. <laughs> oh, I don't like them. Okay, so I am, this pot is, the soil is just terrible. I'm, I'm going to actually have to rinse these off. I hope you guys can see. Can you guys see? Okay, you guys can see it. My head is not in the way. Because sometimes my head is, a, or my hand, or some part of me is in the way. And I do apologize for that. All right, I am trying to take these beets out and leave the soil behind, but um, <clears throat> I am gonna take away, <clears throat> excuse me, some of this soil because it's so wet. And here are my beets. They look really, really worn. They look terrible. <laughs> they look awful, y'all. They really look awful, but that's what I got. I'm gonna put them in the colander that I have at my feet and I'm gonna continue to go through this pot and pull out what I have. Now I did not um, separate these beets. I didn't try to 
uh, pull them out or thin them out. I left them. I spread I spread a couple of seeds and then I left them. Yeah, I don't think that these are gonna be good. I don't think these are gonna be good. But I'm gonna pull them out and I'll assess. <laughs> Look at that poor little pitiful thing. And I'll assess it. But um, I was watching this YouTuber over in the UK and he doesn't thin out his beets or his carrots. He says that they grow best together and the ones that need to move out of the way, move out of the way. So I decided to try that method and I left them all huddled together. Now, if you've never, excuse me, allergies, if you've never grown a beet before, you'll know that when you plant a beet seed, um, that is more of a cluster versus just one tiny little bitty seed. Because if you plant one beet seed and that seed germinates, you're going to get more than one beet to come up. And th these are uh, two different varieties. And so I just threw those beets in here. I think it was a mixed variety beet pack. To be completely honest with you and so let's see what else do I have in here I'm trying to decipher if this is a beet or if this is Swiss chard and I think it, to be honest it looks like it's a it's a beet so I'm gonna take it out because it looks just like this beet right here. It's the exact same thing. It just didn't German. It didn't um, get a bulb on it. But I like this one. I don't like beets, but this one is tolerable. It's an it's orange. So I'm just going to pull these out and I'm going to start over in this pot. I'm going to let it dry out for a few days. And then I am going to attempt to plant something else in its place. I don't know what exactly, but I will figure it out. And here, I know I just said I didn't like beets, but the red beets, um, they taste like dirt. These taste like dirt as well, but they have less of a dirty taste <laughs> than the red ones. So there you have it. I have harvested this bucket of very soggy um, beets, and I am going to take this and rinse them off and see exactly what's what I can actually utilize and, and what has to go into the compost bin but that is the beet bucket so I'm gonna place that right there because I have some other things that I need to to harvest but while I'm over here I wanted to show you not to get off topic but because it's it's very close to this bucket remember in my previous video I talked about harvesting the bok choy that's in this bucket. There was baby bok choy that grew in this bucket and it has gone to seed. And then there is a yarrow plant right there. And then I have three things popping up in this pot that I said I don't know what it is. Well I woke up this morning and in my mind something told me that that's turmeric. It looks almost identical to the turmeric that's growing in the pot over by the lemon balm. So I'm going to let this reveal itself to me a little bit more. But I believe that's probably turmeric. Because I do believe I did stash some turmeric around. Just like you saw me plant ginger in the lemon balm pot. And then I have those two smaller pots in front of the lemon balm pot, that pot that's ginger and turmeric. I think I stashed some turmeric in here and totally forgot about it. So I think that's turmeric and if it is, all I can say is thank you Lord because turmeric is uh, very beneficial to you, very good for your body and if you do not know the benefits of turmeric, what I will do is I will put some information about that in the description box so that if you are not using turmeric you can see whether or not you want to add it to your diet. Okay, I have a few more things I want to see about harvesting before 
I lose light because you all know that I garden in the evening, early evening, and after I water, the light will disappear. So let's take a look at one more thing while I'm over here. Matter of fact, I'm not even gonna turn you guys off. I'm just gonna walk you over there. Do you remember where I, I planted peanuts? I have two buckets or actually bags of peanuts. Can you see that right there? That's the first bag that I planted right there. I've got this garlic that's not wanting to cooperate. That's the first bag of peanuts and look at that. This is the second bag of peanuts and these soaked for a lot less time than those but they came up as well and I put six peanuts in this in this pot so I'm excited to see how the peanuts are coming along very excited all right let's go harvest something else in the garden shall we this is what I deal with here we have a squirrel who has decided that it can just lounge on the porch however it feels and it comes there and it lounges daily digs in all the pots and just lounges however it chooses on the porch it'll sit there until I get out of the car and then off it goes I cannot stand these entitled squirrels in this neighborhood just terrible beasts I realized that I have not fed my native worms in a while. If you haven't, um, if you don't know about my worm project, uh, please take a look at my previous videos. I actually have a worm project. This is an in-ground uh, worm feeder, and I'm trying to acquire worm castings for free. And so I realized I had not fed the worms in a while and wow they not only ate my food they ate the paper towel that was in there wow hungry little worms can you guys see all that deep dark beautiful worm castings as a matter of fact let me get a trial let me dig a little bit in there and see what I have that way you can see up close and personal what's in there before I feed the worms okay I hope I am not in the way so I'm going to try to do this without putting me in the shot, but I just want to show you. I had a paper towel, a damp paper towel, on the top of this heap right here. And this is stuff that they're not going to eat. These are, they've eaten all everything they're going to eat out of this, so this is just waste material. So I'm going to take that out. But yes, there was a damp paper towel that they have devoured and I want to show you uh, this is worm castings all of that is worm castings that I got for free let's see all that that is free worm castings so I'm gonna put I actually need to dump this out and let it dry I need to reclaim reclaim it get it out of here because there is a lot in here this is a 4.8 gallon bucket and I'd say this is about almost halfway full and so I really need to get it out there's a lot of worm castings in here before I put any more food, I really should take it all out. Let's see. And I've got, uh, I can see there's a little bit of paper bedding at the, at the very bottom. There's a tiny bit of bedding left. But yeah, that's worm castings right there. They've made worm castings for me. And so... I really should take it out and let it dry. <sighs> mm. 
I'm not ready for it, to be honest with you. I'm really not. And I'm sorry, I hope you guys can see. I hope that if I put more food in here, that they will come and, and feed off of it with this in here because I'm not ready to dump it out yet. They don't like turmeric, that's for sure. That's an old turmeric rhizome. So I'm gonna take that out. Note to all those, they don't like turmeric. <laughs> I'm trying to debate what I wanna do. Do I wanna take the bucket and dump it into something else and let it dry? And then fill it back up? Or do I want to just leave it and put food in it in the hopes that they come back? Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to take it out and take the worm castings out, leave it out so that it can dry, and then I'm going to fill it back up with bedding and food in the hopes that they come back to eat some more. So let me take it out. Hope I don't have any surprises because you know y'all know I don't like surprises now. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Ooh. Oh, it's really, it's really deep in there. It's really in there. I'm gonna have to excavate some of the soil around it just to get it out. Wow. Let's see, let me try. Let's see. No. Go away. Uh. Uh. Oh, nope. It's coming. It's just going to take a little bit of doing. And I hope that soil doesn't uh, fall back into the hole. So let me put this into something else and then I will show you how I'm going to uh, put bedding and food in it for the next round of worm cast. Okay I have some weed barrier that I have laying out on the ground because if if there are any creepy crawlies worms uh, in the worm castings I want them to have the opportunity to go back to wherever they call home. So I am just going to take this bucket and just dump it out right here on the soil, just like so. Just like that. Yeah, they don't like, uh, <laughs> they don't like turmeric. <laughs> I had some turmeric in there and they did not like that, but let me tell you. All right, so this is my homegrown worm castings. And this is just paper right here that I'm gonna actually put back inside of the bucket. I'm gonna put that paper back in there since that wasn't disturbed at all. So I'm gonna use that paper. Can you guys see? I'm gonna use that paper in the bottom as bedding. It's nothing more than just wet newspaper. So I'm gonna take this wet newspaper and put it back in the bottom of the bucket and so I'm just gonna leave this right here my dog is not gonna mess with it she'll probably smell it but she's not gonna mess with it and I'm just gonna leave this here and once it dry yeah I've got a couple of worms in here matter of fact I'm gonna take him and put him back in the bucket that way he knows where to go I'm sure I have more. I don't see any right now, but like I said, I'm, I'm losing light. So, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get some of those leaves and I'm gonna put leaves in this bucket. So give me a moment to get some leaves and I'll be right back. I had a bucket of leaves, my handy dandy bucket. I had leaves already from yesterday's garden adventures. And so I am gonna, normally what you would wanna do is make them smaller. But since I am not in a hurry to have worm castings, I don't bother making them smaller. 
And this has a stick on it, so I'm not gonna put that in there. So I'm just gonna put some leaves. Now I'm gonna take this back over to the hole that I dug and I'm gonna submerge it back and then I am gonna put some food because the worms will indeed eat the food but I'm using the food as bedding. So let's, let's go over there and do that. Let's take this bucket back over to its hole and submerge it back. Now what I did notice is, is that the hole had water in it. So that means that the irrigation is working. Can you, you guys probably can't see it, but I am gonna submerge this bucket back in the hole. Just like so. There we go, back in the hole. And I hope you guys saw that. I have the beet tops. I was going to try to salvage some of these, but I decided I need to feed the, the worms. So I'm going to put the beet tops in there, like so. And I have a damp paper cloth. I am not going to put water in this bucket because the hole is already moist. It had it has standing water in the hole. So I'm going to cover that up with the paper towel. And I am going to put the cap back on and worms have been fed. I'm gonna call it good. Now I'm losing light, so I am not gonna be able to harvest anything else because what I wanted to do was harvest from this patch right here. Let me show you guys what it looks like. It has gotten so big. This is the patch that I put in that has the beans, the peas, the uh, corn, the squash. And I wanted to get in here, look at that squash. Look at that. Let me show you guys something that I saw earlier today. Can you guys see that? That is butternut squash, if I'm not mistaken. So I've got squash growing up the fence. I have morning glories. Don't know if you guys can see that, but that's a morning glory. Morning glories finally came up. My corn, my I had that that tomato right there, and beans and peas galore just everywhere. And I will show you guys this in another video, but I wanted to give you a quick glimpse because I wanted to harvest in here, but it's getting late, and we do have snakes where I live. So in the event there's anything in there that I don't want on on me. I'm gonna do it in, on another day. So I do believe that is going to be it for me today. So happy gardening to all of you all, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>